Yeah. Ah, yeah. So now we've come to the part where we'll be sharing what we call the golden rules of investing. And, you know, we talk a lot about important messages in today's webinar. At the end of the day, the stocks are not the important message, right? If anything, it is just to share with you some stocks that are trending right now and to, um, for, to help you understand them a little bit further on why share prices are reacting this way and the fundamentals of the business so that you can take that back to go and analyze yourself because this is by no means a comprehensive analysis nor is there any recommendation to buy any stock um but i think what is most important in today's webinar is really this part because uh these are really the most important rules in investing that i think a lot of people are forgetting um when they choose to invest right now especially if they're a new investor or more dangerously, they don't even know about these rules. So if they're not careful, they might end up making a lot of mistakes and have to pay dearly to the stock market in the form of tuition fee. So let's talk about those. Um, the first one, yeah, this is one of my favorite quotes from Warren Buffett. Uh, so Jing, do you want to talk about it? Uh, yeah, so rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, don't forget uh, rule number one. Uh, but <laughs> so worth pointing out that um, a, this is more a mindset than like a heart and uh, a rule because uh, Warren Buffett has also lost um, uh, a lot of money in individual investments. So I actually think that it's more important for people to focus on portfolio level returns rather than individual stocks. Uh, that We definitely cannot get it right all the time in the investing game. There will be, we will end up investing in some companies that don't do well at all. Uh, so I think it's more important to focus on portfolio uh, level returns rather than just uh, uh, individual um, stocks. So I think uh, what Buffett is um, trying to uh, say here is also that like, you know, when you invest, uh, never lose money. And how do you not lose money? You need to do your research. You need to be, you need to understand what you're investing. And more importantly, you need to know what you don't know. So mm. they well within uh, what he calls your circle competence. Basically, it's like uh, like, uh, like a circle where everything inside you know, then you make sure that your investments fall into within that circle. Um, so uh, yeah, so I think this is what uh, Buffett is uh, really trying to say. And not so much that like, you know, oh, I, I, I need to make very sure that I never lose money. But no, I think it's more of like just making sure that you understand uh, what you are doing and then you invest with also uh, what you call a margin of uh, uh, safety. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I think like, you know, um, on, on this part, I also wanted to say that uh, this is a really, really important rule and a lot of investors are kind of forgetting about that right now because there's, it's so easy to be focused on the gains, right? And you see like, oh, the stock market has crashed. So this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for me to buy in and then the prices are going to recover to the high, um, especially since a lot of them are oversold right now. But I think instead of focusing on the gains, right, um, what Warren Buffett and even Benjamin Graham and a lot of these wise seasoned investors have actually shared is that investors should always look after the downside first and uh, take care of the downside and the upside will come. So it is so easy for us to be greedy and focus on how much we can make from this investment. But I think we also need to balance that and actually even more importantly, focus on the risk of the underlying business because it's very easy to sell a sexy story about a stock, right? But it, it what matters at the end of the day is the risk because that's the one that will determine whether or not you lose money. The growth prospects may or may not always materialize, but the risks are real. And I think um, even Charlie Munger has also said that, right? It's the risk, the liability that you have to be careful of. The assets yep, yep. and stuff are always very good. It, it, it's it's in probably a, okay. Yeah. In, a, in, a times, in times of crisis, your liabilities are always... Oh, oh, no, in fact, your liabilities are always real, but in times mm. of assets may turn out to not be true. Yeah. yeah, correct, correct. So I hope you guys remember this rule. Try to change your perspective away from profits focus and gains focus to risk uh, focus. Maybe not risk focus, like, but yeah, apply more risk analysis when you decide what to invest in at this time. And never forget this fundamental rule in investing. And, and, and can I share Can I share something very uh, interesting? Uh, just, just to let everybody have like an interesting thought to take away. And it is that one of the one of the uh, very effective ways for people to manage risk, right, is to simply have a longer time horizon in the market, which I think is slightly counterintuitive because uh, people always say that, you know, um, we should, uh, if, if you hold your stocks too long, isn't that risky? Uh, but I want to show, uh, am I able to do a screen share? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so let me... I think you have the share screen. Yep. Part. 
Okay, I'm going to share one particular. Yes, can uh, Don? Can you see a chart? No way. Eh? Eh, no, uh, uh, you click, you click on turn screen share on. Yes, correct. I'm sharing. So oh, you cannot see anything? Cannot. Eh? Are you going to send me the link? <coughs> or or yeah, you going to type the link on the chat group so we can all open as well? I can also open on my side. Yeah, let me, let me just try again. Eh? Mm. Uh... I think I'm sharing now. Can are you guys able to see? No No. Okay. Never mind. Let me let me just share the link in the chat. In the chat group, is it? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Uh, yeah. So guys, let's go and click on that link. Um, so if you guys scroll all uh to the first chart that you see there, it's the chart title says um. Uh, total real market returns 1871 to 2012. So what this chart shows, right, is that the uh, the chances of you losing money if you hold stocks for a certain period of time. Mm. US market, right? So if you hold stocks for one day, uh, chances that you lose money is 52%. Mm. Right? Chances that you make money is 52%. If you hold stocks for 20 years, right, uh, the chances of you making money is 100%. So with a diversified portfolio uh, in not every market has shown this kind of history, but like in the US at least, uh, you know, if you have bought the S&P 500, which is like a diversified um, a, 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 a portfolio, simply lengthening your time horizon, right? By uh, in your investing activities actually lowers your risk. Mm. And I, I, and I, and I, th so like um, the Motley Fool's co-founder, Tom Gardner, he once said something that uh, I have uh, remembered for a long time. He said that one of the easiest ways for investors to improve their returns, right, is to double their holding period mm. of stocks. So th the thing is that if you are invested in a broadly diversified basket of uh, stocks that tend to have uh, uh, pretty decent futures, then simply lengthening your time horizon would lower your risk tremendously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that, that's, that's a really, really great uh, sharing. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it's definitely true. I think aside from the holding period, because a lot of us are impatient, right? And the stock yes. market, I think this is also one of the advice later on, in the, uh, if I remember correctly. So the stock market actually rewards people who are patient and not those who are, who are actually impatient. So that's something to note. Um, and aside from also increasing your holding period, the other thing would also be in terms of like your, oh, oh I think surging dropped out. Yeah. Uh, the other part would also be in terms of uh, increasing the number of counters by, <clears throat> by doing diversification. Make sure that you manage your exposure as per each stock that you own because uh, the amount of exposure will also determine your, it, yes, it may potentially dampen your returns, but when the focus, when you're looking at risk management, it's also a good way to have several stocks and not just overly be exposed to one industry. So earlier on, for those of you who caught what I said, I did mention that I don't want the travel industry to be too big on my portfolio because in the name of diversification, I don't want to take on too much risk on that one industry alone. So um, that's another way to manage your risk. There are many other ways to manage risk, but yeah, we won't really cover all of that in this webinar because we don't have time. But uh, yeah, let me just re resume the presentation on and yep. go to the next one. I need to drop out of the room for a while there. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, my screen kind of froze, so I had to refresh the, the uh, webinar. Okay, all right, so the next one, yeah, so this is Warren Buffett's right-hand man, um, and he says that the game of investing is actually making better predictions about the future than other people. So I think some of you asked in the group chat, uh, in private message to me as well, how exactly do we determine uh, the, the entry price and stuff like that, and there are ways to do it, but the key thing is we really don't know when it's a good time to enter, because we can't foresee, and then you, some of you also asked me about the valuation of the US stock market, if that's overvalued now. I mean, we don't know. I, I already stayed in 2016, so for those of you who have been following my I blog for a while now, you might remember that in 2016, before Trump got elected, I openly and arrogantly went out to say that I think the stock market is overvalued and it should correct soon. 
well, I was proven wrong and I've not taken down that post for that reason. I want to be accountable. I want to leave it there as a mistake to remind myself that we really don't know how the stock market will fare. It could be an overvalued as I thought in 2016, but it, hey, it continued rising. And 2019 was insane. I think the S&P returned like, what, 20 something percent in that single year alone. So if you had just like, you know, but you only just base it on like your overall valuations right it does very little good because it's at the end of the day not about the stock market but rather about the companies that you choose to invest in so that is something that you're really key and if you look at charlie munger he's also very well known as uh, an investor and for being warren buffett trusted aid and what he tries to explain is one way to increase your chances of making better predictions than anyone else is to limit your tries to your areas of competence so focus on what people call the circle of competence. Like earlier on, on oil and gas, we have shared with you that we're not good at oil and gas. And for those of you who took the poll, I can see only 1% of all of you here say that you would because you are in the industry. So that's great. But for the rest of us who are not in the industry who don't really understand oil and gas enough, then we're not going to try this because if we try to predict the future of everything, we attempt too much and are more likely to get it wrong. So this is something that I hope you guys will remember. It is at the end of the day just a prediction. So any guru trying to tell you, yeah, the market will recover, oh, it will not. At the end of the day, it's just a guess. So you have to decide for yourself what you think and what you are willing to put your money on and then just leave with that. And if you're not sure, then searching that advice is also great. Increase your holding periods. Focus on great companies. Um, diversify, diversify, look at marginal safety, look at the risk and increase your holding period. Don't try to move in and out because of sudden price movement. Because otherwise, you could end up like me, <laughs> move out of Apple because I thought the price would go down and you know, it never came back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so I hope you guys have learned. Yeah, and Warren Buffett also has another great quote on this, which is that, you know, he says a lot about buying something that you'll be happy to hold if the market shut down for 10 years. And I think aside from holding period, uh, something I really love that chart that you shared, it was a pity we didn't add it into the slide beforehand. But um, I think in terms of this as well, right, for me, because a lot of us juggle a full-time job or other responsibilities in our life and let's just be very real unless you are in an investment related job which is why i envy the people at fifth person because that's literally their job and you you right you guys <laughs> me and all. yeah but unless you're in this job right it's honestly very very hard for us to do so much work and balance so there's only very few um we won't be able to cover the entire market for sure so at the end of the day, like, you know, when you have to also balance with the other priorities in your life, focus on companies that not, won't make you lose sleep at night. Focus on those that you don't have to keep watching like every quarter or every half a year because you may not have the time for that. And I had, I had also learned that mistake firsthand because I invested in one stock that was meant to be a short, uh, a relatively short term uh growth play but in the end because i didn't monitor that because i i underestimated myself when i got pregnant and i was away from market for a good number of years i i was like still proclaiming oh i'm gonna do a lot of things in my fourth trimester during my maternity leave because yay three months or oh, four months sorry and nothing got done <laughs> so you know i didn't manage to keep up with the market during that time i didn't keep up with the stock and as a result i also made that mistake so please remember that uh focus on companies that make you uh uh feel less worried or you don't have to monitor as much especially if you don't have the means to do so because of your schedule or other competing priorities yeah so do you have anything to add on here or should we move on to the next golden nugget nothing to add okay right yeah so uh yeah you i think earlier on you were talking about holding period right so this is a quote that we were talking about warren buffett did emphasize the importance of patience in the stock market so please do not be impatient whenever people ask about like oh is this a good time to buy will the share price go up uh it will go up in the long term i guess if it's a good company but if you're looking at whether it will go up in the next like one month the next three months when COVID is over the truth is no one really knows and if you're trying to move in and out of the market because you're so impatient you're trying to catch everything you're trying to make money while you can now because you know how don't know when this will recover people are predicting a u-shaped recovery a v-shaped recovery that may not happen for every stock Right, so that's something that you want to remember. Investing rewards those who are patient. If you were impatient on Amazon, yeah, you know, the ABC chart shows what you would have. What and most likely people looking at ABC would be like, no, 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 I don't want while I'll drop so much, you can I'm out and out of here. Right. But if you were patient, then the DEF chart clearly shows you that you would have been so well rewarded for that. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think uh it's uh in investing, most of the money is made. Uh, during the waiting uh, and 
it's not so much the actions uh, that are that have been made, but really just that being patient. Uh, there, there's a really good story uh, that I came across years ago. It's uh, about this money manager named Jack Kirby. He wrote an article for a finance magazine called The Coffee Can Portfolio. So very quickly, the story. Kirby uh, had, was, had served a female client for about 10 years, um, telling her what to buy and sell. Then uh, one day the client said, uh, my husband just passed away. Can you take, help me manage his portfolio? So Kirby saw the husband's portfolio and it's very funny. The husband's portfolio had all of the buys that Kirby uh, recommended to the wife. All of them. He followed every single buy, but mm. never made a single sale. Mm. What happened was, right, the husband's portfolio ended up being multiple times larger than the wife's portfolio. <laughs> He had one single stock that was nearly the entire value of the wife's portfolio. Oh, wow. So after Jack Kirby saw that, right, then he, he kind of like really drilled the, the, the power of patience into him. He realized that all his actions, buying and selling, all that, right, were just nowhere near as useful as just finding good companies and holding them for the long run. Yeah, Yeah. correct. correct. Oh, this is a really great story. I've not heard that. I, I need to go. Yeah. You, can, you can Google that. Coffee, coffee can portfolio. Yeah, I am, I am. I'll probably yeah. write about it on the blog also and I'll credit it to you. But uh, let, me yeah, put it, let me put it in the chat. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think that's a great story. I think on top of that, um, uh, it also focuses and we really want to, like, you know, what do you call it? Uh, uh, re, re, like, reconfigure or refocus all of you back to what is fundamentally good investing. Um, buy and hold is one of the best methods but what we mean by buy and hold is not just buy and hold forever right it also means buy good companies hold them and then only sell if a thesis changes so i think that's something that many people are not practicing as much because it's so easy to go for the quick profits and the quick money so um yeah i think that story really is a beautiful one to illustrate the whole point of how whenever you try to time the market move in and out in and out it is so hard to get it right honestly even the professionals struggle with it not to mention emotionally it is so much more tiring um i i don't have it in this slide but in in one of my workshops last year, I did share the story about Warren Buffett versus uh, Jesse something. I can't remember his last name. He's a so, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. Jesse Livermore, yeah. So Jesse was actually the best, the greatest trader that ever lived. And Warren Buffett is considered the greatest investor that ever lived. And if you look at their emotional journey, their mental journey, like in terms of their marriage, their life, and their even their lifespan, it is yep. so different. It's so clear. Like Jesse had like so many vices in his life. He committed suicide as well, right? Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. And then like he, I think he had like drugs or stuff or smoking. I can't oh, remember okay. a lot of vices or like alcoholism and stuff. But you know Warren Buffett, look at him. He's like still so right and healthy and still managing for sure how the way. Still so wise after all these years. Happily married, although it's his second marriage, but uh, even then the the fallout of his first marriage wasn't due to like you know issues or um any major like adultery or anything like that. So there's a lot less stress as well when you focus on finding good companies. And I can really attest to that because in the last few years I've learned that it's so tiring to try and time the market. Really, really tiring. And it's so much easier to just focus on finding good companies and holding them and only selling when the thesis changes. Yeah. Okay, now the next one is, uh, yeah, so I think this one also I would really want to emphasize. I mean, with the current market situation, you, some of you may have already seen a lot of your friends are now jumping into the market and even SGX and all the brokers are all experiencing an unprecedented surge in the number of new accounts opening. And, oh yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. And I think if you guys happen to be one of those people, we're not saying that it's wrong. It's great that, you're, that the current situation finally prompted you to take some action and learn and start investing but before you invest please one thing we really want to emphasize is please make an investment into your own education first learn before you do because if you make money again going back to what we say you put in money based on something that you don't know the more you don't know the higher risk you're taking and the more likely you are to get it wrong and thus lose money and all of us all of this is hard-earned money right so the best way is really to learn so some of you asked uh, on the group on the chat privately to me how exactly did me and searching start because we have non-financial related background there are many ways to learn right uh for me personally i started by learning from books but then um, i realized a lot of the books were not exactly i can't really just replicate what the books shared directly because singapore market and asian markets function very differently and a lot of the best investing books are written by western authors so some of what they said are also not very relevant anymore although the timeless pieces of investing advice still always hold 
right? Like buy low, sell high and, and, and margin of safety, stuff like that still hold. But you can start with books. You can also go for courses. I think there are a lot more course providers that have been coming up recently. Um, and they are also like, I, I personally attended quite a lot of courses in my investing journey. I went for those by the fee person. I went for those by Dr. Rao. I've also gone for those by um, AI and many other investing providers. And um, this really helped. Now, some of them, obviously, I feel on hindsight, I shouldn't have gone because it wasn't worth the money. But there were some, and the ones that I really, really like and value, if you guys have been following my blog, you'll also see me recommending them. And for very good reason, because these are really the ones that I've learned a lot and I found beneficial. There are also causes at many different levels. So whether or not you have like, you have a lot of money or, or lesser budget, you will be able to find a course at your budget to help. And if you really have zero, zero budget at all, then a quick, a easy but long way is to go for like, you know, reading a lot of the investment books, tuning in for a lot of the webinars. Even right now I attended, I attend webinars regularly to learn from people because the learning and investing never stops. And I think that's something that we really hope you guys will take away. Please learn first before you invest because otherwise you are really taking out a lot of wrong moves. So do you have your experience? Have you seen people doing this recently? Doing what? Sorry. Like, you know, just jumping in the markets without like knowing what to invest or even how uh, to invest. No, I don't think I, I don't think I've come across people I know personally who have uh, done something like that. Uh, but if they did, and if I knew about it, I would um, advise them against it. Yeah, mm. really agree with you that the I, I love the quote. Uh, the best investment you can make is an investment in yourself. Uh, I think uh, before people start investing their real money, uh, they should really learn uh, about what it is that they are doing. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 I definitely tell uh, new investors that you know, the first thing you should do, the first investment you make should be in your own um, education about uh, what the market is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I do know of some friends personally who are jumping in. So if I know mm. that, I will always just tell them, please, I don't anyhow jump first. Or like some of them come and ask me stock tips. And instead of answering them what stock is good to buy now, the first question I always ask is, do you not invest? <laughs> Have you ever invested before? Do you know how to calculate certain ratio? Do you know what to look out for when you analyze a company? And if they can't answer that, right, I always say, please wait, get yourself in educated first. And I think like it has been worrying because um the the uh, uh online especially on a lot of the forums you're starting to see I even in like mummy group chat that I'm in right I'm starting to see people saying like uh things like oh the current market is uh, a great opportunity because it's finally prices have gone low so buy low sell high right that's what everyone say so I want to go and invest now can you all tell me uh where, what I should invest is or what brokerage I should open and honestly if you're asking that kind of question it already shows your lack of knowledge and your lack of education so instead of jumping on and asking people what you should buy I think it's more important to learn how to analyze what to buy because you ask 100 people you're going to get a lot of different answers on what to buy you are searching he'll tell you great he, he bought DocuSign right and then I'll tell you like oh, I, I'm, I'm not really a pro DocuSign at all and here's the risk that I feel that I cannot sum up so you know everyone is going to have a different opinion but you know, at the end of the day, it's your money. So let's say you invested based on this person's stock tip or the other. If you win money, will you thank them? Will you give them money? If you lose money, will they pay you back your losses? No. The one who has to be responsible for that is yourself. So please take responsibility for your own investments, your own education, and learn first before you anyhow put in money. And I will also add on that uh, it's very important for um, especially new investors to figure out if they have the time and interest and energy to actually invest by themselves. Uh, a lot of people don't, uh, and that's fine because uh, people have different interests. Uh, there are um, some people just want somebody else to handle all of these for them, or like they may think that I, I think it's interesting, but try it out after a while. They're like, you know, this is not for me. I'd rather just outsource it to somebody else, and I want to use my time in my life to do other things that I find more meaningful. And that's completely mm. nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that, right? So. I think uh, it's also important for people to figure out like if they want to spend time uh, in the market itself or if, if they don't want, there are, there are so many great innovations out there for investors. Now, I think robo advisors are a fantastic tool for people to start with very low amounts of money. Um, and it's like a completely outsourced kind of uh, investment solution, uh, automated as well. Um, very So, so I, I think um, the investing infrastructure today is so much better than it was just five years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think uh, it's 
probably a good time for people to start because of this, because of the infrastructure. Yeah, but uh, individuals should really um, ask themselves, like, you know, do I really want to do this? Because uh, it takes, it does take time and effort um, and, and also a certain level of interest. So I think like people uh, like, like Don uh, and, and myself, uh, we have an interest in it. That's why we are but um, not everybody has that interest and, and, and that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I'm a bit odd because like, I'm, I'm probably one of the very few girls I know who kick out over stocks. <laughs> yeah. But um, if, if, you know, honestly, there's, a, there's so many great platforms out there today. If you're not, uh, I think it's good to learn how to read and analyze uh, companies and stock. And even if after learning that you feel that it's not for you for various reasons, whether it's in time, passion, commitment, interest, you know, at least you know what you're doing. And there are also so many other options. There's like ETFs, there are regular share saving portfolio where it's just a basket of stocks and you do discipline entries every every time. And honestly, I think even those would more would put you ahead of many other people who maybe don't even invest at all. Of course, it also depends on the market and when you go in and how long you hold it for, right? But at the end of the day, I think like there's just so many options out there and investors today are so much luckier. I mean, I personally, I think I have another poll right now that's running, so you guys can go and vote on there. So I ask how knowledgeable are you guys and how would you rank your own investment knowledge and skills? So I would say like after so many years of investing, I would personally rank myself as a much more higher, um, higher level than, than most other people but even then right i also recognize that there's so much more that i don't know i don't know about oil and gas i don't know about like as a lot of saas companies until recently i started looking at them because all these guys like surging and free person starting to talk about it and i am i feel so much luckier now because like when i first started investing there just wasn't that many resources i think back then um the full and alpha Seeking Alpha and some of the other um websites were great resources but there wasn't a lot to choose from but today, you know, with the good investors, with Value Invest Asia, the fee percent, so many more sites that are reputable and coming up. And even a lot of established bloggers that I like. Um, I read SEAK, but um, his analysis is always very touch and go on. So I'll the end, I'll bring a lot more research myself compared to if I read stuff that you or some of the other people, right? But, you know, there's so much more now in the market that we can choose from. And I love hearing from all these different opinions and people who have different takes on a stock because it helps me to be more informed. And sometimes I hear or I read things that I didn't even encounter or didn't even prioritize when I was studying that investment and that makes me think again oh yeah hmm, maybe I should relook that part uh. and it, it helps me to become a better investor so I think at the end of the day like no matter how knowledgeable you are the, the whole thing about investing is, is, is that at the end, uh, you really need to be consistent there is lifelong learning but we're also very lucky today because there's so many more causes available than ever before I think Three person only started their courses in 2015 or 16. So anyone who started before then, like you only had the option of like four thousand dollar courses. And that was a, a huge sum to sum up. Yep. <laughs> right. Yep. So yeah, lots of options today. Uh yeah, okay. So uh we're we're coming to the end of the webinar and we only have like 13 minutes before webinar gem sh- cuts us off. 12 uh, minutes now actually. 12 minutes. Okay, let's let's hurry up on the last few slides. Okay, so yeah. To sum it up, how to invest during the COVID-19 climate, it is not about specific stocks. So for those of you who came in looking for specific stock ideas, I hope that with us touching on some of them, you do have some good ideas to take away now, but they are not recommendations at all. And at the end of the day, please focus on your own due diligence, right? But the key messages and the guided approach we want to teach you guys to, to get on how to invest during this time is, number one, please firstly get educated. Whether it's through books, whether it's through causes, there are online causes, there's offline causes, there's just so many resources out there now. First of all, please get educated. And then know what you're investing in. If it is not your circle of competence, if you're not familiar, be open to acknowledge that you're not an expert in everything because no one is. And focus on the things that you understand and you know. There are some stocks that are easier to understand even if you're not in the industry. Like, for example, um, What's that stock that has ST, uh, ST Lauder and a few other like um, consumer brands? Those are easier to understand because we are, all, we are consumers, we are the end users, right? But if you look at like B2B, unless you're in the industry, you may not know. In fact, a lot of what I learned about cloud computing was only because I had a job that had required me to learn about that. Otherwise, I honestly, I think I would struggle because I don't have much tech background. So 
only focus on the ones that you know and you understand and then be prepared to hold through the volatility this is so so important because as surging has shown the horizon of your your investment horizon is very important and if you can't hold through the volatility right yeah you're going to end up in stock abc instead of stock def so you determine what your results will be uh, I think also no FOMO, right? So, Jing, <laughs> how do you how do you overcome no FOMO? Uh, how do I overcome? I I don't know. I have uh never been tempted by uh FOMO. Um, like was it twenty seventeen or something when Bitcoin was all the rage? Uh, oh, yeah. I, I felt nothing at all. I'm like, oh, okay, you did well, with Bitcoin. Very happy for you, but it's not for me. <laughs> yeah. So so I I I really don't know. I. I actually think that there could be certain psychological aspects of investing that are perhaps born that people are born with. So like some mm-hmm. have some have it, some don't. I, I don't know. It's something that I think very hard about because um improving investor psychology, sorry, investing invest improving investor behavior is something that I believe uh in very deeply. Uh it's something that I want to help. Uh but uh yeah, I I I, I don't know if like, you know, if there if there are certain traits that could perhaps just be uh, born with yeah i think also um, i'm on the na- on the nature versus nurture camp i'm always a firm advocate that it can be both so i think mm. yes some people are born with certain characteristics like some people are naturally more patient they are they are more like resilient against like fomo and trends but for the rest of us who are not i think we also can train right i, I mm. sometimes struggle with fomo it depends on what context and how many people are like you know beside me saying eh, you should be <laughs> So it really depends, but I think emotional competency is definitely something that, that I've learned a lot. That's a very good point because there's this uh, investor called Guy Spear uh, who uh, lived in the uh, in the US uh, in 2008. Him and his friend Monish Pabrai, uh, Spear, Guy Spear and Monish Pabrai are both fund managers. In 2008 or 2007, they won the uh, lunch auction uh, for to to have lunch with Warren Buffett. Ah. Uh, that, I think it was after that that Guy Spear shifted to Switzerland. Because he said that Buffett uh, lived in Omaha and I kind of asked Buffett why. And I think one of the reasons was that uh, Buffett chose, chose to live in Omaha partly because he didn't want to be in New York where there was just so much noise happening all over him. He cannot think about his investments clearly. So he wanted to be in a place where it was quiet, where he was away from all of these uh, temptations and, and uh, not. Yeah. So I think it speaks to uh, what you described about, you know, um, how many people are beside you. Yeah. Say, yeah. So yeah, like yeah. trying to cultivate an environment where it can be away from mm-hmm. this that could help. Yeah. Yeah. Or like community. I think the more friends there are in your circle who are interested or passionate about investing, that really also helps. And oh, definitely. the thing about yeah. the internet today is that even if you don't have friends in real life who are, who are in this category, you can find them online. So yep. many good places like Facebook. I think the Sydney stock investing place is a great place to start and it's completely free. Um, although there is a lot of messes over there. So you may you do have to have some kind of discipline to exercise <coughs> resilience against the, the noises from people because you don't know who is, who is uh, savvy and who is not when it comes to online community but the key thing is yeah, you know immerse yourself in environments and you will also become a better person based on the kind of environments you are in so i think in investing also i think one of the things i'm really really thankful for is that um because I, I'm, I'm i'm a female right and i really have very very few female friends who i can talk to about investing so i think one good thing was that the blog has actually helped me over the last few years and as I attended courses I've come to become friends with a lot of these people now and I get to have these conversations with them that I otherwise wouldn't have so that's why I also appreciate that you're taking the time off to join this America because I know you know it's it is such a pity that uh, uh, not many female uh, females are interested in investing because I there I've seen studies that say that females are actually have a better psychological makeup to be <laughs> compared to men Investing involves a lot of deliberate um, thinking uh, and patience, and these are areas where uh, women do much better than 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 men. So mm. it is a pity that we do not have um, we we don't see that many successful female investors uh, um, around. And I hope that this will change dramatically, uh, mm. uh, like when when I'm around. Yeah, I, I hope. Yeah. That, like, I I do think that females tend to make better investors uh, than than male. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but they, they do have to get educated. And then once, I think once they're in really, wow, the level of insights they can give also is quite something to watch. I, I, I am a huge fan of Lauren Templeton. 
and I ah, think yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, had yeah, one yeah. one to one uh, uh conversation with her. I think it was like a twenty wow. minute or thirty minute session. That's, with her that, that's incredible. Yeah, I love There's also another insights. female investor that I think is uh, fascinating, and uh, that's Catherine Wood from Ark Invest A R K. So she's the ah, founder. Okay. Invest. It's a firm that specializes in um innovative companies. So they have ETF, they run ETFs and and mutual funds, investing specifically in innovative companies. Uh, mm. so very uh very interesting and very successful uh, female investor as well. Mm, yeah, yeah. I hope uh we will have more and more of these people. Yeah, yep. so, I hope so too. Yeah. Okay. Then um the last one, and we're gonna end off with one one fun fact for you guys who uh I I think you guys might want to screenshot the next next slide because it's gonna have some stuff that you might want to use for COVID nineteen. But um yeah, the fifth one the last one we will talk about is go for companies with strong balance sheet because I think now with COVID nineteen the truth is it's changing so fast and rapidly we don't know how long this will prolong we don't know how 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 long this will last so I think the best way to counter it is to look out for companies who have low debt and uh, lesser liabilities, strong balance sheet, free cash flows, strong management, because these are likely to be the ones who will survive the crisis, especially if it prolongs for very long. Yeah, so that's something that I want to leave you guys with. And the last part, yeah. <laughs> so this is something uh, Sergey and I would like to share with you, the discount by the sectors that have been affected by COVID-19. So if you guys have always wanted to look into stocks that have been affected by this current crisis the most, this chart, you may want to screenshot this, this chart shows you where the biggest discounts are found in and where they're not. And quite obvious, right? You look at like consumer staples, yeah, there's barely anything. In fact, most of them have actually grown because of the crisis. Yeah, but um, this is one good place to start if you wanted to look by sector. But at the end of the day, remember, it's not so much the sector that matters, but the company. Because the company will not die. I'm oh, sorry, the sector will not die, but the company you choose for may not survive this crisis. So it's very important to go back to strong company fundamentals. Yep. Yeah. Correct. Uh, a positive macro trend need not necessarily mean a positive stock price return. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's all we have for today. And we're running just about in like four minutes short of them cutting us off. So I'm going to end off so I don't get cut off abruptly. <laughs> yeah, but thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm, I'm, I'm mind blown that we still have more than 200 of you on this call. Only a few of you dropped out. And uh, this has been a joy speaking with you, Sergei. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with my readers. And thank you all of you for taking your time off lunch to come and listen to us. Uh, we won't hold you up too long so you guys can get back to work. But if there's anything, we will um, also share with you some of the information on a blog post or in email for those of you who registered so that you can get like this this pic, this graph and a few others that Sergi and I talk about but if there's anything else uh, do look forward to our next webinar I'm, I'm actually having another one with Stanley next week is it next oh, week? oh yeah, nice yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. But, but yeah. our next seminar with um, the founder of Value Invest Asia is going to be very much centered on FANG. <laughs> nice. FANG stock so if you're in, into like the Facebook, Microsoft you know, not Microsoft, sorry. Facebook, Netflix, Amazon, uh, Alphabet, Alphabet. And, and who's the last one? Uh, uh, -A -A. Apple, Apple, yeah, Apple. Apple. And Apple. So if you're really huge on the FANG stocks, which have been severely discount recently because of the, the crisis, then that's something that you might want to tune in. It's happening on 6 May in the evening this time. So yeah, we'll see you guys there. And thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, yep. Sujin. No, th thanks for having me. And uh, thank, thank you, everybody, for, for staying and listening. It's mm, been yeah. Really Thanks, everyone. Yeah. We will try to do more of this. So thank you and invest safely.